Let me start again. Everybody, welcome to my live today. I will discuss um, three things. Number one, how I got a teaching job in the Russia. Next, what platforms you can use so you can also, you know, get teaching jobs in different parts of the world. And the third one will be the employment package that are offered, that's offered by international schools. The school where I will be teaching at is in Russia, like I said. So Russia is a big, big country. It's a federation of lots of republics, right? I'll be working in one of the republics in Russia. It's not in Moscow. It's, uh, it's a less known republic. I don't even know about this place. I did not even know about this place before I was hired. Okay, I did not apply to this school. Okay, the principal of the school contacted me through my personal email and he said in the email, I posted it already, I'm sure for those who may already have read it, it says there that he found my profile in Scroll. Scroll is one of the recruitment platform that you can use. So I'm subscribed to Scroll. I paid $50 to be subscribed. And so he found my profile there and said I might be a good fit to uh, an opening that they have in their school for the incoming school year 2024-2025. And then he asked me about my availability for an interview. So it was really quick. And I told him that my available time and then we had the interview. I wasn't told that the interview was going to be a panel interview. I thought it was just him, the school principal of the secondary uh, department. But there, there were two of them. So one of those who interviewed me was the principal, like I said, and the other one was the head of the science department. And he is teaching IB, DP physics in that school. All right, so that's how I got the job. So again, I wanna repeat, I have a subscription to Scroll. And then Scroll is one of the recruitment platforms that you can subscribe to so that you can apply to different schools internationally. So that includes U.S. schools, but not public schools in the U.S., okay? The schools here are private schools. And if the school is subscribed to those platforms, then they will be able to, you know, look for teachers, look at their profile, and contact the teachers if they're interested in them. This is also a platform for teachers to send their applications. I talked about these platforms in more details in my previous video, so you can watch that later. So I just wanna go over, these are the common platforms. These are recruitment platforms. You're not going to pay a lot. You will be paying for a subscription. If you subscribed, you have unlimited access to all the job postings in international schools worldwide, okay? You can filter it by country if you wanna search. If you have a target country, say you wanna only look for uh, teaching jobs in say China or in say Asia, it can be filtered by continent, by region. You can also filter your search by say the subject area or grade level. Okay, so these are the platforms. You can, again, watch a detailed video on this. There's TES or TES, there's ISS, there's Search Associates, there's Teach Away, there's Teacher Horizons, there's Scroll. Scroll is where I am subscribed to. I also made an account with Teacher Horizons. Teacher Horizons is for free. Okay, so you can, um, search this in Google, right? And then see how much the subscription is. Because some of this could be expensive, like, but not more than 300 US dollars. Scroll, I only paid $50, right? It's not $100. So scroll is cheap, so far the cheapest that I've seen. But obviously, if you're not paying anything, then that's the cheapest. And the one without any subscription fee is Teacher Horizons. 
I have been sharing about this on my uh, Facebook page anyway. Okay, so those are the platforms. They are recruitment platforms. If you create an account with them, you will see the job postings from different schools all over the world if they are subscribed to the platforms, right? If you if you create an account with in the platforms that I gave you, again, you have access to all of the job postings. If you are going to subscribe, I would suggest that you start subscribing by November of each year. The subscription is good for one whole year. Why is November the best time? Because that's when they're posting more jobs. Because by March, April, a lot of these postings are already closing. That's what I noticed. And as we approach April and May, there's less and less job postings. So the best time is to start your subscription by November. So at this point, uh, you can still do that, right? So it's okay, but there will be less postings. Most of the schools now are actually already helping the, the successful applicant to work on their visa applications. Like right now, I'm already working on the visa requirements, right? These are the perks and these perks are common to many of the IS or international schools. When I say international schools, I'm referring to schools that are very expensive. Obviously, the profile of students here is way different than the profile of the students that you will have in the U.S. if you will be teaching there. Because if you will apply in the U.S. as J-1 visa teacher or H-1B, most of the job postings that you will see will be for public school, uh, will be for public schools. So you'll be teaching students that are low income families, right? Some of them have professional parents, but most public schools where the foreign teachers will be assigned to are Title I schools. So those are the low income families. And their school grades usually, you know, either D, C, rarely you'll be assigned to teach in B or A schools. You will be brought to schools that have very challenging students. That's why these schools have, you know, more shortage uh, of teacher. For the international schools, if you create your accounts in this platform that I mentioned, again, these are the schools for the rich kids. You know, the kids of ambassadors, the kids of politicians, of celebrities. That's where the, these kids are studying. That's why if you will look at the school profile, their tuition fee is really, really high. In the Philippines, it's millions, for instance, or 700,000 pesos a year. Obviously, because it's an entirely different profile of students, the profile of the parents will also be different, and you'll be facing a different kind of challenge, right? There will be higher expectations. Their parents would be probably more involved. So. Yeah, I'm looking forward to experiencing how it's like to be a teacher in an international school and also in a different culture altogether. Okay, so having said that, these are the common perks. Sorry, I took a long detour from this one. So these are the common perks in international schools. Number one is you will have a fully furnished accommodation for free. These international schools, they usually have teacher accommodation within the campus, okay? And it's for free. So therefore, you don't have to worry about your rent, unlike in the US. Like the bulk, the majority of your salary will go to your rent. Okay, so there's usually free accommodation. So you either stay in their uh, faculty housing within the campus, or they will give you a an accommodation allowance. Okay, that's big, right? So like in my school where I will be teaching, 
they have a faculty housing within the campus and it's for free. So if you're coming as a family, your apartment is going to be uh, with two bedrooms. If you are a single teacher, then it's a one bedroom apartment for you. Again, it's fully furnished. There's TV, there's couch, fridge, everything that you need, you just have to move in. And again, it is for free. Next, it is common for these schools to cover the airfare of the family. Okay, so take note of that. For my school, I will not be paying for any airfare. They will book my flight from Manila to Russia. So I'm not paying anything for my airfare. And when it's the turn of my family to follow me in Russia, to Russia, I mean, the school, my school will also book their flight. So I will not have to pay for their flight from Manila to Russia. So again, the first one is free accommodation. The next one is free flight, right? Next, they also give free travel allowance each year back and forth let us say it's winter break and you want to go back to your home country for a visit right they will also cover the fare and it's yearly so you have a round trip travel allowance isn't that good do you still want to apply in the u.s <laughs> okay so free travel allowance back and forth i want to write it down again i'm writing on a brown paper <laughs> free travel allowance next it is also common and this is also a perk one of the perks that i am going to receive at my school in russia is the medical insurance it is for free and includes my family. And the medical insurance is international. Okay, so free medical insurance. Again, that includes the teacher and the dependents. Okay, number five. If you're coming with a school age dependent, like your children, your kids will study in the school where you will be teaching for free okay for free it's common other schools would only shoulder like a certain percentage of the tuition okay so but in the school where i was i'm hired to teach is for free so my son will study in that international school and I'm not going to pay any tuition, right? So free uh, education for the dependents. So that's five already, right? And this, in the US though, your dependents, if they're school age, they're also free. Don't worry about that. So this one, US and international schools uh, share the same. Uh, privilege for the dependents. Okay, another perk, one of the perks if you teach at an international school is that, hang on. Okay, transportation allowance is also given, right? So free transportation, right? So if you are not staying within the campus, say you decided to stay outside of the campus, then you will have to travel every day to and from school, right? They will give you a transportation allowance. But if you stay within campus, obviously you don't need any transportation allowance. Like in the school where I will be teaching, the school housing, the housing for the faculty is within the campus. So I will just have to walk. So for this school, they will not give me any transportation allowance. Okay, so that's number six. Okay, number seven. You will have paid, all holidays are paid. Okay, paid holidays. 
and some holidays are long like winter right and whatever holidays they have that is Spain next number eight most international schools would give you a moving allowance okay you have a moving allowance in the school where I will be teaching they will give me a moving allowance and it's like 500 US dollars okay 500 US dollars for moving allowance and that is separate from the shipping allowance okay so what is this shipping allowance the sh shipping allowance is suppose you are going to bring lots of your things from your country right and it has to be shipped they will pay for it okay so moving allowance shipping allowance you will not see this part as part parts of the employment package if you apply in the u.s no it's only in international schools all right number 10 what else oh the salary right the most important thing okay the salary i'll just give you an idea my salary in this school is the same as the entry salary in florida where i taught for five years so i'll be receiving the same salary as the first year uh, teachers in florida correct so it's a bit lower than the salary that i had in florida when i left there but even then so what is the entry salary in florida now it's forty seven thousand five hundred, right a year i will be receiving a little bit higher than that in russia but with all the perks that i'll be receiving i don't have to pay for the apartment i don't have to you know pay for the airfare of my family right okay so i have and if you look some international schools they would even pay higher than what i am will be paid in russia i saw one in china um their lowest pay the entry level for the salary in china is one of the schools there that i saw is fifty nine thousand us dollars it's even higher than us salary if you're starting right if you have master's degree then it will be higher and then you you have a free apartment they'll take care of your airfare right so can you see now that there's actually a better option if us is something that you know kind of scaring you for instance or the getting a job offer is difficult it's been elusive you've been trying maybe it's time for you to try applying in international schools correct i haven't mentioned this as well did you know that in international schools most of them the salary is tax free there's no tax so the school where i will be working in this coming school year my salary is also tax free so in the end i have more take-home pay teaching at an international school that than teaching at a public school in the u.s okay i hope i'm not forgetting anything so i already mentioned about the tax oh they also have like a bonus each time you finish a contract so the contract is yearly renewed okay so in the u.s if you go there on j1 visa you're tax free for the first two years only it will be refunded to you 100 percent on j1 visa but in international schools really the school will pay for the teacher's tax okay so I hope I'm not forgetting any. Oh, in my school where I will be teaching, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned already, um, my meals three times a day is free. So I will eat in school. And because my son is also going to study in that school, his three meals a day is also free. So only my husband will think about his food, right? Okay, Sir Bagdas. I don't know yet the overtime pay, but usually 
in those schools they don't you know have like uh, lots of overtime that they need to do so that thing I don't know yet so and I don't know yet if you're allowed to do other job besides teaching in the US you cannot ha have other jobs right because that's a visa violation I don't know yet the other you know things I will know when I get there and I will continue to share those information to you. Yes, I was according to, uh, I asked this, my husband can work. Okay, but I'm sure he will have a problem with the language because it, within the school is English. So by the way, are you required to speak the language of the school, the country? For instance, if you your if the school where you're applying at is in China, are you required to learn Mandarin or whatever? No, it's an international school. The language is English. So like this here in Russia, I'm not required to study the language because the children speak English. 96% are Russian, but they all speak English. So like English is, is their second language. I'm sure if you teach in Russia in public schools, English might be a challenge, but these are international schools, okay? So, so that, Mom, I, Sir Chatty, I don't, I'm not familiar yet with the OEC. I will find that out um, later on in the process. Oh, I forgot. They also will reimburse all the um, expenses for my visa application. So I just have to save all the receipts and they will reimburse to me whatever I spent in my um, visa application. Mom, Leilin, I'm not in Russia yet. I'm in the Philippines, okay? So there, according to the HR there, I am. I'll, they will start the seminar. The teachers will start reporting the school to attend seminar in August 12th. The classes will start in August 26th. So they are hoping that I'll be there starting August 1st. So they're expecting me to be in Russia from August 1st through August 12th. Okay, so the other details I will know as I go through the process and I'm planning to share them with you, whichever things I am allowed to share or I can share with you. For now, these are the information, okay? So I think that's it for me. So I'm now going to uh, answer your questions. How long have you been registered to scroll before receiving the offer? Okay, I only registered in Mar March. Yeah, I registered in March. <laughs> I created an account a long time ago, but I did not subscribe. So I only started subscribing in April this year. And right after subscribing, I received that email from the principal from that school. Okay, but I'm telling you, I've spent lots of application, uh, application to different schools. I got, you know, many rejections, okay? Because the thing with international schools is that most of them, they have preferred, you know, nationalities. For instance, most of them would prefer the applicant to be coming from a, uh, uh, English speaking countries like that's their native language for instance UK Canada New Zealand US right or um, Ireland Australia and most of these schools would like applicants who have experience in international curriculum like IB which I have I experienced, you know, teaching IB physics in the U.S., so that's why maybe they contacted me. I think without that, I will have even more difficulty getting a job. So if you have IB background, if you have AP, 
background, if you have Cambridge curriculum background, if you have American background, American curriculum, Common Core. So yeah, you have more chances, okay? Um, the by the way, the currency exchange between Russia and the Philippines is that you know the Philippine peso is actually stronger. I saw that one peso. I mean one rub, ruble. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Ruble is the currency in Russia. One ruble is only um point sixty seven Philippine peso. Okay. But the salary in international school is in U.S. dollars. Guys, the international school's uh, recruitment platform is not just for Russia, okay? It's international. It just so happens that the one that contacted me is from Russia. And my goal this coming school year is to leave the Philippines. So I did not care what country. So when Russia came in, that's the opportunity that I got. I accepted it especially with all the perks that they're offering to expats. I will be teaching their IBMYP, that's middle year, so the secondary meaning that's um, a science, by the way, that's science. So that's grade six, seven, eight, or yeah, I think six, seven, eight. How to apply, Mama already said you can start creating account with the platforms. I already created a video about this recruitment platforms for international school. Create an account there and it's better if you subscribe because if you have subscription, you have unlimited access to uh, different schools who are posting. If they also have like a job fair, you can join for free. It's already paid for by the subscription. I will be teaching middle school there. So unlike in the U.S. that they're strict with the alignment of your credential and the post you're applying for. So in international schools, if they see that you have, you know, the experience that you can teach other grade levels, then they can offer you that. So like I said, my experiences are mostly for, you know, older students high school and college right but during the interview they asked me did you have any experience teaching younger students so i just mentioned that during my time in florida i was teaching middle school students during spring and summer break because yeah because i did you know teach middle school students in the u.s because i was teaching science and math math camps during spring break okay and they are middle school students i also had an opportunity to be a substitute teacher to a grade school teacher in saint paul a long time ago so that's that's why i said um, i'm glad that i accepted all those opportunities when i was a younger teacher they were all useful to me during the interview Okay, so I was not really choosy when it comes to accepting jobs when I was a younger teacher. So thank you. Please pray for me so that our visa applications will be as smooth and it will be successful. So then I could share more information to you guys. So I will continue doing the my page and my YouTube channel. Um, actually, guys, during the time when I was looking at the, you know, like profile in Russia, I was thinking, will I still be able to do my page and YouTube channel because of the sanctions, right? And then, you know, I think, yeah, I think so because I saw lots of YouTube content creators con doing contents in Russia. I saw Filipinos doing TikToks. <laughs> they are, there are Facebook pages. Of Filipino groups there so I think it's fine so I will still be able to give you contents about the US and about Russia next because I already talked 
a lot about US application. I think every important thing that you need to know, I already created a content about them. So this time it's Russia and international schools. Okay, cost of living in Russia. I haven't really searched the cost of living because with all the perks, like I have free meals, my son and I will have free meals three times a day. I also don't have to pay for rent. I also don't have to own a car. Therefore, you know, the cost of living is not very important to me anymore, right? Because how, you know, whatever is the cost of living there, I definitely can't afford it because I have lots of take home money. But obviously it's a good thing to know if you know the cost of living. I'm answering Leia's question, can couples teach both? They actually prefer if both of you are teachers. So they would usually ask you, is your spouse also a teacher? Because your spouse can apply as well. So both of you will be teaching and you will be treated separately. So therefore, um, if both of you successfully pass the interview and everything and that they're hiring both of you, then you have separate moving allowance, you have separate, you know, those things. So it's better if both are teachers. Whether I'm subjected to OEC, I will know eventually. So again, I'm not teaching in Russia now. Hoping that everything will run smoothly. I will start teaching in Russia by August, second week of August. Guys, you will know what subject areas are looking for if you create your account. But I'm telling you, unlike in the US where they're mostly looking for STEM and SPED teachers, in international schools, they're looking for every subject teachers, drama teacher, music teacher, PE teacher, social sciences teacher, psychology teachers, every different you know, subject area. You're not allowed to do other jobs under J-1 visa. It's a violation of the visa. If they find out, they're going to end your program. Okay? The extra job that you can do can be tutoring, doing science and math camps or whatever camps you have in school. You can sign up for coaching. You can sign up as a club moderator. You can sign up uh, for bus duties. Okay? Again, it's a violation of your J-1 visa if you have other employers besides the one that is indicated in your DS-2019. Okay, the entry salary, so I'm, ask, I'm answering Lalin's question. The entry salary depends on your how many years you've been teaching and your credentials if you have a master's degree. So I don't know. Uh, the, if you look at the school profiles, when you create the accounts in this platform that I mentioned earlier, you will see information about um, salary range, okay? And also the list of all the perks. By the way, it's also required for the applicants to have at least two years of teaching experience and you should have a valid home teaching license, home country teaching license, okay? Two years is the minimum. Okay, good question, Roderick. So this is the thing. In most of these international schools, I noticed they have age limit. Um, according to the description that I saw, it's because of the requirement of their country for foreign workers. So for teachers, the usual that I saw was 52 years old. Okay, they said there that you should be at, um, at most 52 years old at the time of your application in international schools. In the US, even if you are retired from your home country, you can still apply. That is why I was saying, if this Russia teaching experience will be good and my family will be also enjoying it, I will continue to teach there if they still want me to have me, right, obviously while I am still within the acceptable age. And then when I can no longer work in international schools because of the age restriction, then that's the time that I will go back to the United States. <laughs> because again, in the US, as long as you're qualified, your age doesn't matter, okay? So that's what I'm planning. So hopefully, I hope you will pray with me also, that you'll pray for me and my family. 
I hope my Russian ex teaching experience will also be successful and so that I can also continue to share, you know, another options for you. And hopefully the conflict with Ukraine will end, will not get worse. Remember, I shared on my Facebook page that because to because of one document that the visa sponsor is asking me to turn in and I cannot provide it because I'm in the Philippines and I realized that it's not easy to get that document. I gave up on my application in the US because I know my time is running out. I have to make the decision quickly if my goal is to leave the country this coming school year. So once and for all, I said to myself, okay, U.S. will not happen this school year. I have to do something and get a job somewhere else. And I'm very grateful to uh, Heavenly Father that I got this opportunity. Because I know um, this might be because of the conflict. A lot of people may have concerns. But, you know, before going to the U.S., I had concerns too. I have lots of misconceptions. And... The only way for you to know exactly, you know, culture, the safety things is when you're already there. So I feel like it's another opportunity for me to widen my perspective. It's an entirely different culture, right? And we all have like this stereotype, you know, um, things we think about when we hear the name Russia or the Russians. And I'm no, I know that it's going to be a great opportunity for me. Mom Eunice, yeah, I still have plans of going back to the U.S. because I'm eligible to go back there because I'm done with my two-year home residency requirement. But because I'm done with that, I can go back to the U.S. anytime. But when I go back there, my target is no longer J-1. When I go back to the U.S., my target will be H-1B, not any other visa. So, guys, I must tell you, your credentials are very important to them. Your experience in the international curriculum that I mentioned earlier. Like I told you, a lot of the schools I sent my applications to, they ignored me. They did not even give me a chance for an interview. That's why if ever you're given the chance for an interview, really do your best. Make sure to shine. And you know, sell yourself the best way you could. But, but still be authentic, right? Don't lie. Because if you lie, it will come out anyway. Make sure to uh, work on your credentials, okay? And because there will be lots of opportunities for you. And make sure to continue to have good relationship with your administrators because you will be needing their recommendations. Okay, all of this, whether you will apply in the U.S. or international schools, they will need the recommendations from your supervisors, current, so principal, assistant principal, or I don't know what it's called in your school, it can be the department head. So I'm grateful that all my administrators, they gave me very generous recommendation letters. Okay, make sure to always do your best. Please work on your English communication skills, work on your confidence, okay? Because if you plan to teach in the U.S., if you plan to teach in international school, in international schools, then the English communication skills are really, really important. So don't mind those people who will be laughing at you or who will be looking at you like you're, you know, all you've, that you're trying too hard. But, you know, don't think about those. I've been saying this. You have your own goals. And your goals, they kind of have like a certain standard. And as teachers in the U.S., as teachers in international schools, obviously we will not be using the Filipino language there. Okay? If you can speak with a neutral accent, then that's much preferred. That's preferred. It's not required, but that's preferred. If you can speak a neutral accent, I feel like you'll be more confident 
because you know you will not be judged. So make sure to work on that, okay? I'm also wishing all the best for you guys. If it's not the U.S., there's going to be another country for you. Just work on your credentials, on your qualifications, and practice your communication skills, okay? So thank you. Since there's no more question, thank you guys for joining me on my Facebook Live today. This video will stay in my page, so if you want to watch this, and I will also edit this video, and I'll upload it in my YouTube channel. Thank you guys for your support as usual. Bye, guys. And enjoy the rest of your holiday today.